You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 91, 10 years of composite dentistry, what's new? In this episode, we summarize what the last 10 years of advancements in composite dentistry has done for us. And really in the end, the big question is, what should you be using in your practice today? We'll summarize that for you and give you some specific recommendations. Also, an interesting product of the week and some tidbits on banking dental stem cells. What's that all about? It's all here for you today on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by the Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call one 800 472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Do you want to be able to understand, place, restore, and implement dental implants into your practice? Well, we've got the course for you, Restorative Driven Implants, taught by the Dental Guys. Restorative Driven Implants is coming to Des Moines, Iowa this fall 2019. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com right now to sign up for the next series. And welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. And if you're driving your car right now or mowing the lawn, <laughs> right, you owe it to yourself always. to just pull it over to the side, disengage <laughs> right. the blades, safely exit the mower, <laughs> right, and just cruise on over to YouTube and check out what Wes has got going on. Wes, what are you wearing right now? What is what is going on? Well, the first thing I have on, John... Are you wearing the product of the week? It, I'm wearing the product of the week. You know, as we, you know, have dove into the idea of <laughs> sleeping bad... I can't look at you. I can't. I it's so bad. All right, so Wes is All wearing right. this, like... He's wearing what looks to be like an eye mask, and then he took off the eye mask, and there's these these glasses too so he's got eye mask and then he's got these glasses your glasses are like tinted or something what is going on yeah so got? the eye you know the eye mask is highly recommended uh, especially if you have a spouse that maybe goes to bed a little later than you do and or you live in the city why do you need an eye mask or, well okay so what's the use block out all light like like there is nothing getting through mm -hmm. an eye mask. And so the whole idea is to enhance how much melatonin, mm. right? Melatonin. Is released, right? Okay. And so it really good sleep hygiene, John. <laughs> St <laughs> if anybody starts if you anybody can't tell, Wes right. Mullins has been smoking on the pipe of yep. dental sleep medicine, or should we say airway. Because it used yes. to be sleep medicine, now it's it's not anymore. It's airway. So, it's airway. So you've been smoking on that pipe, and I have too. You've been smoking yeah. on it a little harder than I have, though, lately. And you're I talking all cool about wine. sleep hygiene. So when you say sleep hygiene, you mean the things that we surround ourselves with, essentially, or that we do in order mm. to get better sleep quality. I mean, so the eye mask is one. And what's special about this eye mask? Well, the eye mask itself... Um, it's super comfortable. On the back of the eye mask, the part that touches your face, um, there's actually a, you know, kind of a well for your eye. Oh. And so that whenever you put this on, it doesn't lay against your eyelash. Okay. So one of the most annoying things about most eye masks that you can buy is that they're just a flat piece of like fabric. Right. Okay. This and you actually can't even has, like open your eyes without it being all jacked up inside there and your, your right. eyelids. You can kind of see scraping. on the screen how yeah, you can kind of see on the screen there if you're watching this, how that, you know, it goes around the abicularis ocula. Oh man. Right. You have if been smoking Botox on that pipe hardcore. <laughs> well that's that's Botox anatomy. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> saying though, man. Wow. But but anyway so you can blink your eye and it doesn't annoy you. Your eyelash doesn't okay. like scrape the front of this thing. It's just a really comfortable. So where eye can mask. people we'll get, get this? Since this is one of the products. This is Amazon. Week. This is Amazon. Who it's makes 12, it? It's like twelve ninety nine. This is made by 
Uni Me. Okay. Whoever that is, I don't know. You but know, it's an Amazon bought, special for twelve bucks. It's an Amazon special for twelve bucks. Link in the description below, John. I think I sent it to you. So what last are these week. glasses that you have on? Okay, right so now? everybody knows that every phone out there right now has this this blue filter. Right. Right. Like right. You, you can like program you, it to come on at a certain yeah. time and it blocks out the blue light. That's right. So why would you care about that? Well, anything like the screens that I have in front of me, these these studio lights. Uh, the LED lights that you use in your studio, John. I mean, heck, even that incandescent bulb back here, mm -hmm. you know, in this lamp behind me, they all emit some blue light, Yeah. okay? So we all know one of the things that blocks blue light, we use a blue light every day, John. It's around 450 nanometers. That's the curing light you use to cure composite, right? which is what today's show is all about, is oh, about composite. Yeah. Don't, don't, right? don't blow it too quick there. Let's yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. So... So we use an orange filter on our curing lamps and even in our LED headlamps. We flip those down as we're scrubbing our bond in so that the blue light wavelength that is in those things gets blocked out. So yeah. one of the things that suppresses, have you ever heard somebody say, if you want to wake up, walk outside and look up at the sky. The sky is blue and it will actually suppress melatonin hmm. okay so an hour and a half before bed now i'm telling you if you do it consistently an hour and a half before bed if you just cut out all light like yeah. cut it out now if you're one of these people then you know what if you want to cut out all light you just put this on and you go to bed the eye mask you're okay? talking about the eye mask right the eye mask if you I forget most people don't watch <clears> right those, not everybody but, can see you right now so I'm trying to help right. you out trying to help you out thank you i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> but as you as you know john and i and my wife and his wife we like to watch a show binge watch right? watch we watch the binge watch whether it's something on netflix amazon prime or most recently hbo game of thrones <laughs> game of thrones um we are going to be staying up a little bit later so one of the ways to stay up and block all the blue light is to wear orange glasses yeah now, I went ahead and I splurged and I brought these off of Amazon versus buying. You could buy orange safety glasses, yeah. right? Yeah. You can buy them on Amazon like bucks. So why get bucks. those ones? Well, these are look They look dorky. more like normal glasses. They're they a little bit like tinted, like but they're and not they don't super orange. Right. They don't change what you're seeing so dramatically that when you're watching a show yeah. that it's going to like, you know, Totally change your viewing experience. Well, because I read so, several, and so, I mean, you can find this anywhere. Probably everybody's heard this now, but if you are exposed to blue light, it delays the onset yes. of sleep by hours. Yes. Hours, right? And we're not talking so, about all sleep, but but deep sleep stages mm -hmm. become delayed for hours just, just from the exposure to a little bit of high intensity blue. And so that's where mm -hmm. these blue blocker kind of things come in with your monitors and with your uh, phone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see this uh, go on in uh, the militaries using this technology. That's right, they for are. For people that are like on submarines, they're trying mm -hmm. to regulate their sleep cycles. So they are mm -hmm. filtering certain types of light in and out, depending on if they want to be awake or asleep or shift workers right, that are trying to mm -hmm. stay on a specific schedule. So you're basically just saying that a normal person who's not doing any of that stuff, who just wants to, to have a quicker onset of sleep or less issues with uh, delay, they could wear mm -hmm. the orange glasses maybe an hour and a half before bed if they're watching TV or mm -hmm. looking at the screen, and then mm -hmm. they put on the eye mask when they go to bed mm -hmm. and combine that with, you know, maybe some white noise if you need it or something like that. And you got mm -hmm. some ingredients here that could maybe help you get better night's sleep. Yeah, I think the combination of these things um, help people out. Um, so you have to kind of understand when you get into um, airway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're smoking on the you pipe of airway. And you're smoking on the pipe of airway, right? That you're going to run into a lot of questions. Yeah. And a lot of people have poor sleep. I mean, most people. Let's just say most people have poor sleep hygiene. Yeah, yeah. And and until you really start to kind of 
dive into things like, an, I, I've never worn an eye mask in my life. And I yeah. told John, I said, <clears throat> you know, we do a pretty good job, you know, blocking out the lights in our bedroom, but everything we has, has an LED that a charging light. Mm-hmm. I've taken tape and taped over like my watch's charging lamp. Oh, yeah. The, 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 you know, the smoke detectors have lights and just with your eyelids shut, the light shining through your eyelid has been shown to, to, you know, basically not allow you to get into these deeper stages of sleep and uh, not in getting into the detail of, of just basically sleep and the stages of sleep. Yeah, but, but I think you just suffice to say that if you start learning about airway, you're going to learn about sleep stages early on and you're going to mm-hmm. learn that just making some simple adjustments to your sleep mm-hmm. routine uh, can get you there faster. And so there's some yeah. products that we that Wes is using that <clears throat> you know I actually ordered. I ordered some of the glasses because I just wanted to try them. I, I the sleep mask thing. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll try that. Well, but I think you know we'll put you some need, links in the show I think description. The, the glasses. I mean, it, it. Hey, you throw these on. Right. You go. You go watch TV and then you go to bed. Yeah, that's you what know, I'm if, thinking if, is because I would use those a lot. So we'll uh, and, check and out and the too, links in the show description for this. We think it might be useful to you. Before we get into the that's and that's our product of the week, by the way. Yeah, product, uh, so product of the week, of the week is the glasses and the eye mask. Yeah. So before we get into bulk of the show, which is going to be really a great show this week, because we're going to be talking about what is new in composites in the last ten years. A summary, uh, a brief overview, but diving into some specific things that have changed and specific things that have not changed about composites and how that changes what you should be using in your practice today and maybe what's coming in the future. So right after this break, we'll be talking about composite. So uh, come back and uh, we'll be right back with you. This is Justin Goodbrand and here is today's tip. Where are you with your annual goals? The first four months are over. Are you on track? Why or why not? Do you need to make any adjustments? Who is holding you accountable to working on the business versus just working in the business? Are you being as efficient as possible? How about this? Is your net worth increasing at the rate you desire? If not, now may be the time to hire a coach. For more information about today's topic and other dental related topics, head over to financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information. All right, and we're back. Uh, continue on with, uh, with this episode today, Wes. This has been one we talked about a few months ago. We were talking about Really, uh, we on the show, we've talked about bulk fill, right? It kind of started with that conversation. Mm. It actually started back at Spear Summit, right? We yeah, were, with we he- were Harold Hyman. Yeah, mm. Hyman was talking about what's new in composite bonding, and he talked a little bit about composite. And then when we were at the American Academy of Fixed Prosthodontics uh, conference a couple months back, Silas Duarte talked about composite technology, got us mm-hmm. thinking about what we should be using in our practice, and it got us really thinking, you know, because my first comment, I think it was me who said, you know, Wes, not much has changed in composites in the last 10 years. And then we started yeah. thinking about it. And we're like, you know what? No, actually, that's not true. There are some big changes that have happened, but there are some things, there's some things that have stayed the same. I think the first thing we should talk about, Wes, is let's talk about bulk fill. Let's talk about yeah, bulk let's... fill composites, where we are now, where we were 10 years ago. These things basically didn't exist. And now it's completely different. I'll tell you what, bulk fills changed my practice. Yeah. You know, it's a game changer. And, uh, you know, John, we were talking about this the other day is, you know, when we were at, uh, we were catching up with some friends, some uh, rep- representatives that have been longtime friends at 3M. And we were talking to them at the booth. And, you know, and I, I said, you know, tell me, tell me really, you know, what, what you guys are still teaching people about bulk fill and how deep you can cure this stuff. You know, five millimeters, it's safe. Right. Safe. And I, and I, and I looked at John and he was like, yeah, man, five. Yep. You know, and 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 I think that that right there in itself, what does that do for you, John? I mean, there's several oh, things it does, and we've we've covered this before. And the first thing I'm going to say is that any general dentist is doing pediatric dentistry. Yes. Okay. Now we talked about how much we do, but let's just say that most of the stuff that John and I do in our practice is just bread and butter pediatrics, right? Composites. Right. Doing and doing so, treatment that doesn't require sedation. 
That's so right. we're sticking it's to right. composites. Drill, we're not doing a ton of pulp and bottomies fill. and stainless steel crowns. Yeah, drill and fill, class twos and class ones. Okay. Now here's the thing: when you're doing pediatric dentistry, you want to get in <clears> and you want to get out. And so with bulk fill, that's what it provides. Yep. Basically, pediatric dentistry, we don't. We, there's no increments. Like right. there's never a if time. If you have bulk fill and a high intensity curing light, Man. you are set to go. For pediatric dentistry. I mean, I did today. It's a go-to. I did today four composites on a kid. I used two, I used three technologies that have totally transformed pediatric dentistry in my practice. I used Isovac to yeah, isolate it so I could work on it. upper and lower at the same time. I mm -hmm. used bulk fill composite and a high intensity curing light. I finished four composites in 20 minutes with really mm -hmm. no Significant issues, no problem. Kids watching TV on nitrous has the isovac in. He's loving life. I'm lo it's the easiest dentistry you ever do. Very profitable when you have these technologies. And the major one is bulk fill because yeah. isovac's awesome. But when you're having to layer composite in a in a kid who's moving a little bit, man, that's no fun. It's stressful. Yep, it's stressful. Number two, I think. I think number two, the thing that I really think that bulk fill has helped me out with, and I know it has you too, John, is that, you know, 15 years uh, in practice and you're starting to see, you know, the results of what you've done over the years. Mm -hmm. And so as you're taking your radiographic bite wings, a lot of times you'll see some porosity show up mid body of a class two composite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not the end of the world, but then what happens too is as you have seen your composites wear, yep. okay, over time, you see little stains in the center of a composite, like a groove was stained. No, you didn't put that there. That actually is a porosity from whenever you were layering the composite and the patients wore into that porosity. Yep. And so one of the things that bulk fill allows us to do is get rid of incremental uh, yeah. layering. Yeah. And and you have to believe the science. Like that's the part, John, that I think that I had a hard time with is believing the science. So yeah. I kind of just kind of kept saying, well, let, let's, we can do a little thicker, but how thick can we go? And, and honestly, I pick up my perio probe and measure my depth of my boxes sure. and, and how deep my isthmus widths are and all those things to just make sure, hey, am I five and under? Right. And, and then you just, you go with it. And the five millimeters, John, if you would have told me in two, in 1999, when I've started doing composite dentistry, um, and you would have said, Hey, yeah, you can layer five millimeters. Right. Every professor in the room would be like, curse you. That's right. Curse That'll, you. Never no way, That'll never happen. That'll never happen. That's not going to happen. Yeah. But it's here. Like the porosity issue is starting to go away. John? Well, the interesting things that I will add to that, you know, number one is there are people that advocated when high intensity curing lights came out that you could get greater depth of cure. And that's really not true. It's really not true. Mm. You can get maybe a little increased uh, depth of cure, but you still really, if you look at the manufacturer's instructions, they yeah. will say that John the only thing you can get on a typical composite is is a little faster cure but you really can't yeah, get a higher depth of cure on your typical two millimeter incremental composite let's talk about that so yeah. there are some curing lights just to kind of since we are talking about adhesive dentistry here there are some curing lights that have like the super duper mode or right. maybe they have they have a different tip mm -hmm. that you can actually put on to the curing light like a turbo tip right as some manufacturers called it and so did that do anything? All it did was it say, well, now I can cure, hey, unless maybe not 30 seconds, I can cure it in 20 or 10 seconds right. or something like that. That made it faster. And so, John, you have a curing light yourself. Um, yeah. And I have, I have one myself. And mine doesn't have the super boost mode, okay? <clears throat> what it has, though, is they have the turbo tip. And what it does is it in intensifies the mm -hmm. light coming out of the actual um, LED. John, and yours actually has a higher intensity. Like if right, you put right. it on an actual... It has a three-second cure and a five-second yeah. cure. Um, right. And 
And yeah, all that does is just cure it faster. But there's a lot of people out there who believe that it cures it deeper and it doesn't. No. But that's no, so doesn't. that's where you can't, there is just no way to take an incremental layered composite like you're used to if you're not using bulk fill and, and layer it deeper. If you are doing that, you're, you're really making a mistake. You're going to have uncured right. composite in the depth of the box. So what that's done for me is it's allowed me to have complete confidence in curing. Now, just like we saw in CRA uh, a few months ago, maybe last year, uh, mm -hmm. they tested depth of cure with these bulk fills, and they still are recommending curing mesial and distal from the buccal mm -hmm. and lingual uh, after doing an MODO just to be safe, and I think that's what we're doing. That's always what yeah, we do. We because it's wise to just be on the safe side. But the point being, if I can layer five, or if I can, if I can cure five millimeters predictably, um, it reduces voids, it, it has better potential adaptability, um, it just cu it cures a lot of problems that we had. And that combined mm -hmm. with what we've talked about a few episodes back about warming uh, composite, <clears throat> you know, because this is still the issue, if you're condensing five millimeters of composite, is there is potentially still how does it flow right? right so the nice thing about warming is there's you eliminate some of the issues of having to condense it and i think it gets it on on par with another excellent product which is sonic fill um, which is you know using a, a sonic technology to remove or reduce voids and also has great depth of cure so i think products yeah. like you know 3m's bulk fill uh sonic fill by kerr um, and there's several other great products those are probably the two you know market leaders have really changed the game now now remember um, this, the reason I think we're so skeptical about these is because the first ones that came out like SDR, Surefill, oh, SDR, man. it, it was not intended to be used as the final layer. It was intended right, to be was used a, with in the box, right in the box with a nano hybrid or micro hybrid on top. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what that got us thinking is bulk fills are not strong. And so I think it's mm -hmm. taken a while for me to see the data coming out showing that that it can be used as a monolithic type of restoration, um, that's been a that's been kind of taken a while. And, and to be fair, the first bulk fill we talked about this that came out was a little too translucent. Uh, the new bulk fill one great. is significantly improved the 3M product, and I loved what Harold Hyman said about it, because he kind of addressed what another concern was is that you know large bulk of composite. One concern would be are you going to have more shrinkage stress? And he said 3M has kind of C cracked factor, the code on that. C factor, right? Right, right. He cracked. They said he said 3M kind of cracked the code on this because there's a chemistry there that actually relaxes some of the molecular structure of the composite as it cures, so it relieves stress as it cures. Kind of like what we had uh, a while back with uh, 3M's other product that didn't do as well, which was a mm -hmm. ring opening technology um, that didn't catch on back in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. So it's pretty cool to see how bulk fill has changed the game. And, and Wes, here, here's a question for you. When do you not use bulk fill in the posterior? When do you not use it? Because I know you and I are using it pretty frequently, but tell me about some scenarios where you would choose to maybe still use a layered composite. Well, it's a great question. I mean, and there may not be. I mean, I'm wondering what you're doing. We haven't really talked about this before. So polishability, okay, of a bulk fill composite is nowhere near. I mean, polish retention is good, but polishability. Now, mm -hmm. If I want glass, right, <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm not getting that with bulk. You know, I'm getting a good polish, you know, but I'm not getting a great, I'm like, I'm not getting glass, okay? Mm -hmm. So... Plaque retention, right, is not good in class fives. Yeah. Okay, so I'm no, I'm not using bulk fill in class five composites on posterior T. Yeah, neither am I. Neither okay, am I. so that's one area. And let me tell you a little bit about bulk fill as far as handling. It's it's not easy. All right, I'm going to tell you right now. When you switch to it, your working time goes way down mm -hmm. because I don't care blue light filter, whatever kind of orange glasses you got on your LED lamps. Right. It's, it's still more sensitive stuff, to light. This stuff will start to get chunky if you are slow. <clears throat> if Let me just say this. For the young butters that are new at composite and that are not good at like marginating and getting things done, that's where I get a little concerned, John, yeah. you know? So, but back to where I don't use it, I don't use it in class five situations. Yeah. Okay. That's probably the first area that I don't. Yeah. And then in, in any area, like, 
you know, on the facial of like a premolar, I'm not using it there. Yeah. It just doesn't polish well. Yeah. So, um, and for, it does polish. So I, for me, I don't use it. I, I agree with you. No class fives for I got, sure. I got one more area. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So the other area is kind of spinning off like margination. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say that I have a child that comes in and, you know, their, their filling is going to be a little bit beyond a sealant. Okay. So it's becoming a filling. Yeah. Okay. So I don't use it in basically a simple, like very fine occlusal. And here's why is I can't marginate it fast enough in those situations. Now, yeah, you could glob it down in there, but you're going to be like curing this thing. Mm. And then you're going to have to grind it away. Like when I'm doing, you know, simple, tiny little fissured, you know, composites. Yeah. I'm using, I'm using my nano hybrids. Gotcha. Okay. John, go ahead. Yeah. I, I just, I still think the limitation for me on this material is the, is the translucency. Um, mm. Whenever I have <clears throat> an old amalgam, mm. like a huge occlusal, um, mm -hmm. I, I use bulk fill on almost every slot prep. Let me first say that. Any slot prep that I do where yeah. I know that I'm going to be surrounded by tooth that's not discolored and it's not going to be very visible anyway, uh, you know, bulk fill is going to look great in almost all those situations. Where I get into problems with it is removing large amalgam where you have a lot of stained tooth. Um, even when, you know, cause I, I don't believe in removing all stain, you know, from teeth. I, I I'm going to go to where we, to hard tooth or use caries indicator, or whatever you want to do. And so that means that you're going to have some discolored dentin or enamel with stain. And I find that bulk fill is just not opaque enough to I handle agree. that. So I'm usually using my typical technique, you know, either some white opaque flowable or some pink opaque or over the stain and then even with that still layering with uh mm -hmm. with a traditional nano hybrid in those cases i just don't i, I have had okay results point. now if the tooth's really gray to begin with real translucent i think ball fill can work but it, it just isn't as believable it can end up looking more gray because of the translucency and that really goes for any case where you've got a, a tooth color underneath you just don't really like or you know closing access holes for crowns where you've got they see pfm metal you're trying to hide it just doesn't do a good job implant you know occlusals you know it doesn't work very well for that in my hands just because mm -hmm. of the the color so for me it's really limitation more of what the underlying color. tooth color is that and, and the translucency yeah, is better but it's still in order to be able to cure that deep you got to have translucency i don't i don't fault the company for that i don't see how they could make it any better than what it is to be honest with you um and Honestly, still have the depth and, uh, of cure and, yeah that's that's I'm, I'm with you on that just to kind of side note is that 3M just recently released, and we didn't even know it, mm -hmm. a a universal restorative pink opaque. Yes, along with uh, the new Filtech uh, Supreme three, Universal. Yeah, we're not sponsored by uh, 3M to talk about their composites, um, but uh, this is a one millimeter depth of cure, mm -hmm. and basically uh, something you would use in what John's talking about, where you'd block something out. Yep. And honestly, once it's blocked out, well, you can come back with your bulk fill. Right, you know? and the pink and it gives up. it a little bit more warmth if you're looking for increasing value. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still use a lot of white opaque just because I haven't used pink as much. I'm still not as mm -hmm. familiar with how it affects my value, yeah. so I'm still kind of a little gun shy. But I've used it a couple times. I used I didn't use the 3M one. I used the Cosmodent one. John, John, I think it's time for us to kind of maybe dive into the pink opaque world because I'm kind of with you. Yeah, I've I, never really used it. Yeah. And the so Cosmodent no, one I've used one. a few times, but I think we need to get some of this stuff and really Yeah, I think we get some of this stuff and we'll let you guys know. We'll try it over the next 90 days and let you know. Because, I mean, we're always taking out amalgams. Right. And, you know, there's nothing there's nothing worse than telling your patient, I removed all the stain and I pulped your tooth. Exactly. Now we got to do a root canal. Right. You know? So now it's definitely going to so, look good because I'm putting a crown on it. Yeah. Put a crown on it. <laughs> yeah. That fixes the problem. <laughs> So, so bulk so, fill, so, but so here bulk to stay, fill, John, here to, we kind of put it to bed, right? Like bulk fill's here, here to, to stay. stay. Yeah. Here to stay. Here yeah. to stay. So we kind of alluded to this is that microfills are the best for aesthetics because one of polish retention right. and color masking, layering, you know. So has and, that changed you know what, in the last 10 years? Man, not really. Not really. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was, I, I had a case today. 
Uh, interesting. We were, and I, I did some uh, composite veneers for a lady last year, and she came in on her hygiene recare, and one of the teeth, it there was some kind of metamerism going on. Ooh, it's a fancy you word say for metamerism. How, yeah. Nice. So you know, certain lights would hit this number eight. Yeah. And it would just look like there was a little tiny, like, dark place in the tooth. And I said, you know what? And she's like, yeah, me too. She, I kept. I said, just come in one evening in 15 minutes. I'll just buzz that down and, and you know, replace it. Yeah. You know, and basically just re-veneer like this, you know, the middle facial number eight. So I'm thinking about, you know, this. And I'm thinking, man, there's got to be something dark underneath there. And there wasn't. Okay. I just reduced the tooth a little more to provide a little more thickness. Yep. But I did, I did this repair with one shade, okay? That's what's not real. I mean, it's unbelievable today yeah, yeah. that we can use one shade in a lot of situations with these, you know, nano microfills, mm-hmm. you know, and and then it looks amazing. Yeah. It looks amazing. It really looks like enamel um, more yeah. than, you know, and I know that, uh, you know, Cosmodent, re-enamel, I mean... That as much as it's kind of a almost sounds like a silly name, it, it it's one of the most fitting names for any composite mm-hmm. because you really can recreate enamel with microfill in a believable way. Now you have to understand layering. You have to understand what you're doing. You know, one of the best courses that John and I have probably ever taken from mm-hmm. a standpoint of layering yeah. is uh, Jason, Jason Smithson. Smithson. Yeah, Jason Smithson. Yeah, and look for him because. You know, the cheap but good CE, he does a lot of that. Yep. You know? Yeah. And you just got to look for him. You just yeah. type in his name and find out where he's going to be, spend the 800 to to 1000 bucks right. for like a hands-on with him. It's amazing. Another, like you'll an, learn some it, things. Yeah, and another thing I would – so so let's just – just to add a little bit to that, there's one other product that I'm I'm testing right now. And it's mm-hmm. Estelite Omega by Tokoyama. Mm-hmm. It is their uh, competitor to Renamel. And so it's using Toki, and we're going to get into filler particles here in a little bit, but it's using Tokoyama's because- spherical particles. But it's it's designed for layering. And Newton Fall, who's uh, a big name in the uh, aesthetic world, composite veneer world, um, AACD uh, mm-hmm. guy, big, big uh, cosmetic dentist, he advocates this, as does Greg Kinzer out at Spear. This is what Greg uses for his composite veneer course as well. Excellence in, in anterior is composite aesthetics, I think is what the name of it is. And it's an interesting material. Um, it, they also have a DVD that you can buy. It's like 100 bucks, and it's Newton Fall mm. showing him doing what he does, which is actually, I just started watching it the other day at the office just to check it out. It's really high quality. Um, you can learn a lot, I think, from it. I've just, I haven't watched the whole thing, but yeah, it's I'm another looking at it right now. It's interesting uh, on Tokiyama's website. Yeah. Yeah. And interesting product. The 132 bucks. Yeah. For the DVD. Um, yeah. The composite's not cheap if you buy the whole kit. I didn't buy the whole kit. I just bought a couple shades that are comparable to Cosmodent. Uh, the Milky White, oh, they're directly copying Cosmodent. Milky White Opaque is what Cosmodent has. That's a, what I usually use for my, you know, for my, the, the lingual wall of my class fours and, Eight hundred bucks for for get get a, getting started, and it comes with the DVD. Right, it's, it's not that bad. It's cheaper than Cosmodent a little bit. And uh, hey, John, let me ask you this: you've you 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 bought into the Cosmodent realm, yeah, maybe a few years ago. Yeah. So, really, did it change your anteriors? It changed my composite veneers for sure. Mm. Now I don't do a lot of co- of composite veneers, so Neither I'll be honest. I. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest. Like, with does you. it change your class fours <clears throat> a little? You're in size alleged. Not a lot. Like, do you always say, "I gotta have it. I gotta have it." I will say, of if I do a class four that's bigger, that's bigger than average. You know, say it's a third of the tooth. You know, a third mm-hmm. of the tooth class four. Yes, I I will reach for a cosmodent. Um, but I've also combined, so, and we'll get into this product a little bit later, but I use Estelite. That's my go-to composite, very, very nice composite polish as well. And I will a lot of times combine um, Estelite and 
Cosmonet in those situations. But I'll be honest with you, I, I, I love what Cosmonet has and I use their stuff, but unless you are doing a lot of, co of, of composite veneers and that's your, go that's your go-to and you feel like you can do them as well as, as porcelain veneers, man, when you have a good lab knows how to do porcelain veneers, it's delivered a case a day. I was like, oh man, looks so good. If you can do minimal prep for me, I have to charge as much as a porcelain veneer. And unless I have a situation where it's specifically for addition to a tooth or it's a kid uh, with some peg laterals or something, I just don't do enough composite veneers. But I do think that Estelite Omega or, or Cosmodent is something to have in the office and try, especially for your final layer. You know, it's not very strong, but as your final enamel layers and for effects and things like that, I think you owe it to yourself to go take a course from somebody like Smithson or Corky Wilhite or Newton Fall, somebody that's really good, and just learn learn what, even if you just use that training for class fours occasionally, man, mm -hmm. makes it makes a, a difference. Interesting products. But I think Wes, bottom line is it still is they still reign supreme. Like the microfills, these types of products yeah, still have a place. Are the best. They're the best. They're the best for polish retention for anteriors. Yeah. Universal composite has really changed dentistry. Mm -hmm. You honestly, if you want to, and I did this for years, I had one composite in my office. Mm. You know, the same one that I used in the posterior, I used in the anterior. Yeah. You know, and you could practice that way today and it would still be fine. Yeah. And it would still be, there would be no one look at you and say, hey, that's bad. Right. You know, you know what we're, we're we're suggesting here is a few things that I think that, hey, ten years have passed. What right. really is has changed. You know, we started out with bulk fill. Yeah, that's really changed dentistry uh, for the better as far as composites go. Number two, um, really something that hasn't changed is microfills are still the best. You know, for anterior, for the for the. High end aesthetics, let's just right. say that layering, it's still the best. Yeah. Layering, like if you got some stain or if you really got into composite veneers, you're going to end up in the microfill world. Yeah, but for the average general dentist, ninety five percent of the time in the anteriors, you're using some type of universal composite, John. Right. You know. Right. And, and I you, think, and you may, and you may layer. Yeah. You may layer that. And get an acceptable result that 99% of patients will say, man, that looks amazing. And 99% yeah. of dentists will say the same thing. Right. It looks amazing. And I think that, that the, the universal composites, as you mentioned, um, have come a long way in, in at least competing with mm -hmm. microfills in terms of mm -hmm. polishability and, uh, and polish retention and feel creaminess, mm -hmm. you know, the ability to sculpt. Right. Um, and so I would, you know, I would say that, uh, products that everybody knows, things like, you know, Filtex, Supreme, uh, mm -hmm. Esalite, Sigma, Quick, uh, mm -hmm. Venus Diamond, um, you know, some of these Empress Direct, you know, some of these big names, they're all very good. They're all very good. Yeah. Um, all very good. and, and I think that, uh, you can find a product that if you know just a little bit about layering, you can be pretty dangerous. You can do a good job. Okay. I think you can do a you good job. Pretty, yeah, on your on your typical or even your pretty high end uh, uh, demanding composite veneers with just a few shades of different opacities and translucencies. Um, I mean, they're they're really very good. And you look at the polishability of say, Esalite or Filtex Supreme, and polish retention. I mean, I'm I'm pretty, pretty happy. That's why I don't pull out my my Cosmodent stuff as much. Because so many times I feel like I, I get it. And it's like we've talked about on the show before. Yeah. Once you've used an, a composite for five years, for even three years, you start to develop a feel where you're not chasing products all the time. You don't feel you yeah. need it because you're like, I know what this thing does when I layer this much of this, this much of this. And, and you start to be able to do a lot. And I find that a lot of people who are looking for composite products – they're just jumping and they've never really gotten one product and become a master at it. And I know we talk a lot about that on the show, just becoming a master. But if you talk about these really great products, one thing that at the, again, American Academy of Fixed Process meeting, Silas Duarte talked a little bit about that really intrigued us. One thing that did make us think 
as these mm-hmm. things have changed over 10 years, he was talking about what happens over time when you have these nano hybrid composites where due to ma- things like acidity mainly um, and abrasion. When you have a nano hybrid, I'd never even heard of this before. When you have nano hybrids that have zirconia type fillers that are mm-hmm. uh, pointed crystalline type of filler mm-hmm. particles versus spherical filler yeah, you particles. Say cubic shapes, right. you know, with sharp line angles. Yeah. And then he showed where, and, and the study, we'll, we'll put an, a link to it in the show notes. Uh, the study, there's several studies. The, Wes and I were looking into this. We're like, this isn't new. This information's actually been out a long time. 2007, 2014. Yeah, yeah. and and the yeah. study he cited, they basically were, were looking at what happened under different wear uh, conditions. And they found that the filler, type of filler, really made a difference because once that you wore down the resin matrix and the mm-hmm. filler got exposed. Is exposed. Yeah. Yep. That these these sharp fillers were creating problems uh, where they were having washout and stain going on because these were essentially holding on to stain molecules more easily versus so, the spherical, and especially he was showing that on veneers with uh, different cements, that if you so cemented John, it with stuff, you'd see more staining. One of the first type of bonded types of restorations that were used was silicates. Mm. Okay? And if you look at a silicate in in patient's mouth, I, I, see, them, I see them all the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They, they worked. Absolutely. Right? But what was wrong with them, right, is that the resin matrix was not very good. Right. And, and, and the silicate part particles stained. Right. Like, so it'd wash out the resin really quick. Yeah, the resin would start to wash away. And then your particles are exposed and therefore you get staining. Yep. And so what the studies were showing and what he was talking about is that as our patients, okay, eat acid, brush acid on their teeth, and have sleep apnea at night. <laughs> right. And just as they're re- as they're living longer, you know, having more years right. with veneers, more years with composites. Yeah, that's that's the thing here is that the longevity of things, yeah. right? You really start to see the effects yep. of just modern Western, you know, teaching. Dietary things, yeah. You, yeah. you got to brush your teeth twice a day mm-hmm. for two minutes. I mean, this kind of stuff, okay, is new to most of society, yeah. right? 50 <clears throat> to 60 years ago... They were just getting people to brush their teeth. Right. You know, my dad can tell you about the days whenever they were teaching everybody to just, hey, here's a toothbrush. Right. Right? And he was born in 1950. Yep. And so I think about that and I say, okay, think, take a little global perspective here and really see what we're seeing in our yeah. practices today. And what's interesting about this is that the sphericals, John, seem to be performing a little better. Right. Than these other type of fillers, which are the more, let's just call them rough edged fillers, like the zirconia particles, or because if you look at estelite itself, which is one that he talks about, that's really the only one, it is filled by a hundred percent spherical fillers. Right now, that's got to make John feel really good right now. Hey, I'm feeling <laughs> good right now. You know, not like I, user. not like I knew what that meant is the thing. You know, I think that and probably, did Tokiyama really know? <laughs> Right, that's what we were talking about before the show. We're like, did they really know when they did that, or did they just get lucky with the fact that it retains polish well? And uh, now I will say, those guys at Tokiyama, they're Man. pretty smart. Because yeah, Brad, the dental lab guy, talks a lot about their stuff. Well, I want to. I want to. It's a perfect. So, so before we leave that, I just want to say, just think about that. If you're seeing staining around composite margins after several years, you know, I, I you know, you just might want to look at something like Estelite, or maybe companies will start looking at spherical particles more over time. I don't know if we'll start seeing that. How much difference does it make? I don't know. Duarte seemed to think it made a big difference. We may be, we may be geeking out on something that only prosthodontists are, that are doing research really care about, but, you know, it's interesting. But segue to Tokayama, right? So let's talk about, Wes, what may be a game changer, and I don't know yet, <laughs> 
But you want to talk about what's know. changed in the last year. If you told me 10 years ago, Wes, that there <laughs> would be a company that is marketing one composite, one, one composite. shade for every <laughs> tooth color, one ring to rule them all. I just don't believe it. And you know, it's... Tokoyama it's, 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 is making the claim with Omnichroma. They're saying you buy Omnichroma, you only need one shade. Plus, they have an opaque blocker for those situations you need it. But in general, they're saying if you don't <laughs> have a super stain, you know, here's tooth, one. But we got a we got another one just in case. Just in case, yeah, just in case. <laughs> oh man. Now, so so okay. Before we before we say much more, Wes, have you used it? No. Because I've used it. And my no, first restoration, I've only you know how many times I've used it. One. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to so say this much. Is, all, is this anecdotal? This, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of our friends out there. Yeah. I don't John, wanna... you should post your case on. <laughs> yeah. I'll saying? post it on Face- Facebook and I'll tell you I'm an expert. Yeah. So yeah. I, I have done one case. So my associate, my associate and I both got samples of it when we were down at the Henman meeting. And mm. I was really eager to try it because I love Tokiyama. I really think they're a great company and they're smart kids. Dude, it says that it allows Omnichroma to match every one of the 16 Vita Classics. Right. So he uses Hogwash. it. Hogwash. I don't believe it. So he uses it a couple times. So I saw Gordon Christensen talk about it at uh, Hinman also. And he said, mm. it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. They gave it, I think, <laughs> an 80% rating in CRA for whatever that's worth. So my associate uses it a couple times. He comes in the office, to my office, and he goes man, this is a game changer. He said, "Whatever." it looks so good. It looks amazing. It's the, it's the best thing ever. I think we should, we should just buy a whole ton of it. I mean, seriously, man. that's what he told me. He's like, I'm sold. I'm sold. And I was like, how many have you done? He's like three. Okay. So how good did it look compared to say bulk fill? How about Estelite? Da, 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 da. And he's like, it's the most beautiful composite I've ever placed. No way. And so I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it is. So I had, so my next case had an occlusal composite, not a severely stained tooth. I was I had a little stain. It was an old amalgam I took out, but it wasn't severely stained. Now is this just for posterior, John? Well, I, I, well, I don't know. I don't know. They're they when they show in the brochure, they're showing it on molars. That doesn't mean it couldn't be anteriors, but, but I so I so I put it in there and I had high hopes, right? Now, it's weird mm-hmm. when you put Omnichroma out, when you dispense it, because it's very opaque when you dispense it. And the idea is when you put it into the prep, it's super opaque, and then you cure it, and as it polymerizes, it, it changes, and it turns into, as they advertise, it turns into the color you want. So I cured it. I put it in there. I was like, oh, this looks like crap. Then I cured it, and I will say it looked a little better, <laughs> but... It didn't look amazing. Now, this is one case. I have I, I have to evaluate this f- just like any product for a while. I would give it a 6 out of 10 in would terms of Would you get rid appearance. of bulk fill for this? No way. Not at this okay. point. It did not look better. In my opinion, it did not look better than bulk fill, which it sh- really should because you only get a 2 millimeter increment you can layer here. You can't, you can't bulk cure this. All right, so the jury's out on this. And so then, John, just kind of move on here just a little bit. Yeah. 3M has a knee-jerk reaction to this. Uh-huh. Okay? Uh-huh. And comes out with what they're calling... Right. Phil, Phil Tech... Um, Supreme Universal, uh, right? Supreme Ultra. Oh, Ultra. Universal. I thought it was Universal. Like Ultron. Ultra. No, it's ultra. Ultra. Now, they're, they, what they've done is interesting... That I'm like when I, when I was like what are you guys doing? It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, they're a little like, crazy. Like I just sometimes. don't understand it. So basically, they have shades. They have like a ton of shades. Yeah. Okay. For su- you're talking about regular Supreme. Yeah. Or this yeah. Ultra. So, this ult- isn't the Ultra supposed to be a simplified set of shades? Yeah, it is, but they still have a ton. Yeah, isn't there still right? like twelve or fifteen or something? Yeah, there is exactly. But okay, so but of course, to be fair though, doesn't Supreme have like thirty some shades? Yeah, Supreme has a ton of shades. Yeah, so they're trying right. to simplify so, Filtech Supreme. Yeah, they're saying basically if you were going to use A two here, or A two would encompass like four or five shade tags, right? Right. Versus saying one shade to rule them all. Right. So um, that maybe seems a little bit more practical. But then I asked, I asked them. I said, right. so why? 
because I'm already, already using just A2 in the posterior anyway. Right. You know? So, why? And they were, they just kind of looked at me and like, well, because Tokiyama. <laughs> yeah. Right? Or beca- <laughs> exactly. Because we have we right. have to have an answer. Right? right. I'm thinking like, okay. Which is weird because uh, Tokoyama is a relatively, I mean, they're not a small, small player. They're pretty big. But they're not, they're not Kerr. They're not Colzer. No, you know, they're pretty small. They're, they always have good products, but it's just funny. I feel like 3M knew that they were going to really hit the marketing hard. And, you know, I'll tell you, if it turns out that I could use Omnichroma and get a better aesthetic result in occlusal composites, I would probably switch to it for occlusals where I have a stained tooth versus bulk fill. But it's still, I don't know that it's going to work in a stained tooth because they have nice. this blocker that they sell you with the Omnichrome, nah, which tells see, me that they're worried They're worried about yeah. a, st- a, op- a stained tooth. So I, I don't know. To I, me, I, it's like, I gotta here's, try here's it where I think it would be, it'd be interesting, is class fives, dude. Like class five yeah. composites. Yeah, if it could look good you in know? a class five. I'm just nervous about could, putting a class five because it's right there. Well, yeah, it's right there, but you could try it in some premolars or something. Well, I know. I yeah. get it. I get what you're saying. It's just, I, I guess I'm thinking... If it doesn't work in an occlusal composite, what good is it to me? What good is it I to agree. me? I agree. I'm just wondering. It's it's. A I mean, I could use any composite for a class five because you don't need but five who, millimeters of depth but cure. Who, but who's this for? Like, it's I, for I somebody who wants simplified question. inventory, Wes. Because that's a I big advantage. If you're a DSO, okay, let me let but, me give you the scenario. John. Order if you're, shade A2 for the poster. I know, but if you're a DSO though, if you're a DSO and you and you want to simplify inventory and you got doctors rotating in and out of here every six months. I get it. Then you buy 7,000 compules of Omnichroma and you say, it works for everything in the posterior. And if that's true and it works for even 90% or maybe 80%, that's a pretty good deal there because you don't have to inventory control. Because mm. you want to tell, tell you what's frustrating? About two months ago, I had to throw away a lot of expired composite. Oh, man, that's that's bad. Because you have to have these shades, stuff. and then you don't use them as much, and you have yeah, to buy shade them. Shade D4, man, yeah, never shows I mean, up. I, and you gotta when it have shows a, up, you're like, Occasionally, yeah. you got to have it, so I buy this stuff, and then it gets thrown away. So I get it. If Omnichrome is legit, that'd be great. So anyway. I'll tell you what, This has been a great episode about yeah. composite. Ten years have passed. Right. Much... Some things that have changed, some things that haven't changed, some things that we're looking forward to. Right. The innovation has been most recently in how deep, you know, basically we can cure some of these newer composites like bulk fills. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that haven't changed is the basically the polishability of uh, microfills still reigns supreme in the most aesthetic situations and maybe use. But universal composite is around and around to stay, and we're seeing some chameleon effect, as 3M likes to call it, or as Tokiyama likes to say, Omnichroma, one shade to rule them all. That could be something that could change the game, you yeah. know, especially in corporate dentistry. I agree with John. Post your cases if you have some Omnichroma. I want to leave. I want to say yeah, that. Yeah, I'd like to see some. Show me like some cases. Some put it on our Facebook or our Insta, or, or link us on Instagram yeah. if you yeah. got one some good cases. One last thing, John, though, is that you mentioned the other day that one of your family members getting ready to have uh, their wisdom teeth taken out. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned tooth bank. What in the world? Yeah. Is so this tooth was bank? so this was interesting because so I, I first heard about this at at a course. Um it was at the AO, they mentioned um, stem cells and they mentioned pulpal stem cells. So I was like, what? Pulp? Stem cells, what in the world? So I want you to go to toothbank.com. We're not paid by Toothbank or anything. We don't know anything about them except we've just not a heard. Sponsor. Well, Wes, Wes is paid by them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually I am <laughs> no, not. No. We, Toothbank, if you we have no affiliation with Toothbank, but we just so so this is interesting. So their idea is kind of like if you've ever heard of banking cord blood. You know, your kid's born, you got the umbilical cord blood. It is it is called like you know the, the the fountain of youth as some people say if you bank the cord blood one day you could use the stem cells in the co- in the cord blood to be able to maybe 
uh, you know, do a stem cell transplant for your kid if they get cancer. Maybe it could be used to help cure diseases in the future or make drugs that could be specific to your kid's DNA. And this is the whole mm. idea of regenerative medicine. It's, you know, you can, you can basically take stem cells and regenerate a part of the body. And that's what we think the future of medicine is going to be. So you need these stem cells. Now, there's a lot of question about how important is it to get it from specific places. But we know that the pulp of a tooth, primary or permanent, has stem cells, multipotent or pluripotent stem cells. So these tooth bank people, what they're doing, you get the tooth out, you put it into a preserving medium, and then they bank it for you. And they're basically, this is an essentially like an investment, an investment to the future of you or your child. And they'll charge you 500 bucks to uh, like prepare and harvest and get the cells and develop. essentially they're harvesting the stem cells and then they'll store it. So it's like 600 bucks for the first year and then you pay them a hundred bucks uh, a year or they'll do like package deals. You can do 20 years for like 1500 bucks, whatever you want to do. And so you essentially take a hundred bucks a year or less and they'll hold on to your kids stem cells. I guess they're cryogenically frozen or something. And mm -hmm. then if in the future, this technology is what they think it will be. They can get that stuff out of there. They can they can culture that cell line out and do whatever the heck they want with it. Now I was like, what and what in the world? But the person who was talking about this was a legit scientist who was talking about all the potential uses for stem cells in the future. And may, and this wasn't a dental person. Specifically, this was a medical doctor who was specifically talking about stem cell technology and what they're doing at Johns Hopkins. And I thought, man, maybe there's something to this. I mean, Wes, what do you think? I mean, do you, would you do this for for your kid for their wisdom teeth? Because I'm I'm like kind of thinking maybe I think I don't know. Like, should we do this? Well, I just sent it to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's worth you know I, about. I, I I love I love science. Right. You know, yeah. I'm a scientist. I like to geek. You know, I was just looking at Toothbank's Facebook page. Head over there and like them. You know, send them a shout out. Say that you heard about them on the dental guys. And I saw one of the posts that they put up, you know, February of 26 of, uh, you know, this year. And it talks about reprogrammed stem cells, treat spinal cord injuries for the first time. Now, I don't know what the article's about, but yeah. the interesting thing is, is that stem cell research is very interesting. And there are a lot of things that we're finding out about what could be done. And so I'm all about it. Yeah. You know, could and this be the future for somebody? You're, you're a dentist. I mean, what, yeah. what if one day you could say, well, look, we could regenerate your liver because right. we had to take it out because you had liver cancer or whatever. Yeah. What if and, they could cure type one diabetes? Someday? Right. Or we could you take know? out and you could take out a tooth, culture the stem cells, put an implant in, <laughs> right? I mean, even if it's not your third molars. Could this be something that we could end up using as a way to obtain the specific type of these mesenchymal stem cells, which are the most powerful ones that can they can regenerate all kinds of tissues? I don't know. I I, I would love to hear. I, I think it's really on neat. I, I think I think I'd like to hear you know your all's opinion out there on Toothbank and and there's other companies too. They're just one of the bigger ones, I think. Yeah, Toothbank's probably one of the biggest ones. It's interesting. I love it. Check it out. Toothbank.com. Hey, John. Another great episode. Mm. We've had some really good ones here lately. And hey, listen, we want to hear from you. We be, we, be, we hear about people listening um, to the dental guys all the time. Most recently, we heard about someone listening to us overseas. And, and we really appreciate hearing about what you like about the dental guys' um, content. We want to know what you want to hear more about. Maybe someone you want us to bring on the show and talk about a particular topic. Uh, we love listening uh, to uh, people talk about literature and what they're studying. So we're going to try to bring you more content like that um, as we travel the country looking for the next great CE. John and I have been talking about our CE plans for the next year to 18 months. Uh, we have some great things coming up. We're heading back out to Spear Education in November for complex case uh, sequencing. I think it is, John. It's one yep. of the... The courses we've been wanting to take for a long time, we're taking um, several people with us that are specialists. It should be a great time. Uh, but, but, you know, we want to hear what you guys want to, uh, you know, want us to talk about. And uh, can you send us some comments? Hey, head over to Facebook 
and give us a five-star review. If you've not liked us on Facebook, hey, Facebook on us, we've over 1,020-some likes this past week, and I really appreciate you guys doing that. I know that we've been calling out for people to like us on Facebook, so we've got it over 1,000, so thank you so much for that. That's a big deal. We want to go ahead and and give us a five-star review on iTunes. Mm -hmm. That's important um, because that's how people find out about us. Tell people about the dental guys. And uh, also on Instagram, John, uh, we're on the we're we're kind of on the up and up coming up there on the Instagram. Follow us on Instagram. You'll see us post some things on there like we do on Facebook. We can't wait to hear from you, and I can't wait for the next episode, John. Already, uh, we've oh, yeah. got some plans for that, and some great things coming down the pike for um, shows. But um, this has been another great episode, and so for John, I'm Wes, and we are the Dental Guys. Thank you.